Well, happy Friday. I wanna welcome everyone to our virtual live Zoom session. And we're so blessed to be joined today by our commissioner of higher education, Dr. Harrison Keller. And commissioner, thanks for taking time to join us today. I know you're uber busy and you squeezed uh, 15 to 20 minutes in for us today. So thank you so much. So, uh, so thank you, uh, President Hurley. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. Yeah, and so today, uh, Commissioner kicks off finals week for us. And so I, I wanna start by commending our faculty and staff for a, a job well done. We made a very smooth transition, uh, very, very few bumps in the road along the way. We literally had about five to call it eight days to, to convert to this virtual platform. Uh, thankfully, we were in uh, the midst of spring break when all of this uh, kind of broke and, and we had to make some quick decisions on whether or not we were gonna resume face-to-face uh, -face or take our online instruction or our instruction online, I should say. And so we were blessed that we had uh, the ability to extend spring break for a week, which our students really appreciated. Uh, and then we got straight into virtual online learning. And of course that has been extended for uh, the remainder of the semester. And I just thought you would want to know how, what a great job our faculty and staff um, uh, did during all of the transition. Um, before we get into uh, Commissioner Keller's thoughts and updates, general updates from a coordinating board's perspective, I want to quickly go over the agenda uh, for today. After Commissioner Keller shares some comments and, and he and I will have uh, some Q&A uh, toward the end of his conversation. I, I have five quick agenda items that I, I'm going to cover. Uh, reopen Tarleton will be our first. That's the plan that's centered around Governor Abbott's reopen Texas order. Uh, the second item we will discuss our current enrollment uh, statistics and numbers and where we currently sit as of yesterday. Um, third, we will cover our spring and summer commencement plans. Uh, fourth, we will cover the fall semester plans. And then fifth and last, we'll talk about our current FY20 budget. And then we'll get into a, a little bit of discussion around FY21 and 22. So Commissioner Keller, thank you so much. Um, and I, I wanna commend you on your leadership and, and how helpful it's been for uh, sitting presidents to have the guidance, not only from our system leaders, uh, which some of those, uh, by the way, are joining us today uh, to listen to your comments and also uh, just from a presidential perspective to have someone like yourself to text or call and say, you know, take your commissioner's hat off and give me some, some thoughts around X, Y, and Z. And you've been phenomenal and, and very responsive. And our state is truly blessed to have you uh, in this role. You and I started um, our journey together, you as commissioner and me as president, pretty close in, in the time frame. I think it was maybe a month or so. So I would have to ask, how is that COVID-19 preparation manual that you received in your doctoral training helping you during all this? Because I can't seem to find my manual. No, uh, uh, this isn't, I don't think this is what uh, any of us expected that we were signing up for. You know, um, you were ahead of me by a, a couple of months. Um, I, I just became commissioner October 1st. Right. Of course, it seems like a lot longer right now. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, it's a historic time. And for all of our campuses across Texas, around the nation, um, the campuses are experiencing disruptions that are greater than anything we've seen in, in our lifetimes and, and anything that we've seen since the end of the Second World War. Um, so, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to start out by uh, uh, commending uh, you and uh, your your campus leadership and your faculty. I know you're, you've been working tirelessly to support your students' academic progress, success, rapidly converting courses to online delivery, and so um, so I want to I want to say thank you. Um, you know that's it's it's really it's really very impressive, and uh, of course there's still a lot of work to do. Um, there's still many unknowns, but. Uh, my team and I at the coordinating board, we're, we're committed to partnering with you and continuing to work with, with you and other institutions um, across the state during the disruption. So, so if I could, I'd like to share some of the things that we're working on at the agency and uh, some of the th things that we're seeing now. Um, of course, we're in constant communication with the governor's office, uh, legislative leadership, institutional leaders across the state, other stakeholders um, to find ways that we can 
support the campuses and support the one more than 1.6 million students who are enrolled in higher ed across Texas. And um, so when it became clear that the uh, COVID-19 crisis was going to be uh, worse than any of us had hoped, I appointed uh, Deputy Commissioner Ray Martinez, who's our Deputy Commissioner for Academic Affairs and Workforce Education, um, as, our, um, as our agency uh, main um, uh, point of contact. And he and his team have, uh, have, uh, have put significant efforts together. Um, and that team is meeting every day, collecting all the questions we're getting from across uh, the state. Um, and, uh, and Ray and I are, are of course, in uh, close touch with uh, state leaders and institutional leaders. Uh, we've stood up a dedicated web page for COVID-19 related uh, resources. And this site includes an FAQ uh, with information for institutions, for students, uh, borrowers, and other external stakeholders. That FAQ uh, now is, uh, there's more than 80 questions, but that's also where we've uh, put out guidance to campuses um, that relate to uh, places that we've been able to provide some additional flexibility. There's some things that I've been able to do uh, where I have the discretion as commissioner. Um, and we've, in some cases, had to ask the governor's office to provide some additional flexibility. Um, but uh, in, in all these cases where we're providing additional flexibility, we're trying to make every effort to do it in a way that's consistent with our long-term needs and the higher education goals for Texas. So, for example, we provided some additional flexibility to campuses on how you support students who aren't yet college ready and uh, trying to encourage and accelerate uh, co-requisite models. Um, we also released a statement endorsing uh, the national organization's principles on acceptance of credit. And um, so we, we, um, we wanna make sure that where we're providing additional flexibility that, we're, that we still are headed in, in the right direction uh, for the state overall. Um, we're working closely with Governor Abbott's uh, strike force and have been working closely with the Lieutenant Governor's working group also to develop recommendations and guidelines uh, for reopening the state economy. So for example, I expect today we're gonna be releasing some guidelines for how institutions can offer components of career and technical education programs that can't be offered online. All the institutions converted as much to online as they could but there are some components of programs, especially for some of the career and technical education programs that can't be offered online. And so we've developed uh, guidelines working closely with the strike force um, the, uh, and the Texas Department of Emergency Management and higher ed institutions. Those should be released uh, later today. So to be clear, uh, right now we're still saying that institutions need to plan to offer online where they can but where programs have to be offered face-to-face, -face, we wanna make sure that we can offer some clear guidance about how campuses can protect their students, their faculty and their staff and still comply with the CDC guidelines. So um, for the short term, there's a lot we don't know. Um, you know. Of course, we don't know what the trajectory of the virus is gonna be. Um, I appreciate that uh, Governor Abbott's position has been that we're gonna move with due speed, uh, move deliberately. Uh, we're gonna look at the data, we're gonna to listen to the doctors um, and um, we don't, of course, we don't know yet when all the federal stimulus money is going to be coming down to the campuses, whether it's going to be, a, whether there'll be any additional stimulus money, um, or how the governor's emergency education relief funds are going to be allocated yet for higher education. So, so we're working closely with the governor's office, with other offices, and uh, of course, I would argue that higher education's in a far more precarious situation right now than K-12 is. Um, in, a, in, a, in a lot of ways, our higher ed finance system, um, we, we had not uh, uh, been able to reset from the Great Recession, uh, the basis of the general academic formulas that Tarleton and other campuses rely on is still 10% less in nominal terms than it was in uh, 2010. Um, now, we don't know yet what the scale of the impacts going to be on the Texas economy um, or, of course, on college budgets. But we do know that the combination of the COVID-19 crisis and the collapse of the price of oil has been a severe blow to our state revenue. So there'll be some new uh, revenue estimates that are coming out in the next uh, month or two. That's going to be very important for shaping the trajectory of the state budget. 
Um, so we're still going to have a lot of important higher ed policy work to do this next session, but the kind of higher ed session we've all been looking forward to um, isn't going to happen. Uh, so I'm anticipating that there will be uh, budget cuts. We don't know how deep. Um, it, now, I, I'll say this also, that one of the things I've been emphasizing with higher education leaders, uh, you and I have talked a little bit about, and I've talked with policymakers across the state, is that yes, it's important for us to track our costs and lost revenues. And yes, our institutions are reeling right now, but at the same time, um, higher education isn't just a cost center. It's an important part of how we're gonna get out of this. So, so if I could, I'd like to make two strong recommendations. So first, I think it's very important for higher ed institutions um, to be more visible about the kind of positive contributions that they're making both for their own students and to broader public health responses. So uh, for example, there was that old narrative that said higher ed was resistant to change, resistant to using technology. Well, that just got blown out of water. Um, and so we need to keep making our commitments to innovation front and center and, and include in that um, making more visible the ways that institutions like Tarleton are serving their communities. The second thing is I think our faculty and our higher ed leaders across the state would all agree with me that despite all our challenges, despite the costs and revenues, um, uh, higher ed is gonna have a special role and responsibility to play in driving the Texas recovery. So as we're looking ahead to the next session, I think we need to come to <laughs> My, uh, my, gold, my golden doodle agrees with me. So as we, uh, so as we look at this next session, um, we're gonna have to come together around a broad ambitious agenda for how we're gonna move Texas forward. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good point. Um, and, and you and I have talked, we, we have spoke about becoming more visible as in the upcoming session. And, and that's where I really think that faculty and staff um, will at, at every institution, not just at Tarleton, could play a, a vital role now in really releasing some op-eds. Um, a lot of faculty members have been conducting economic research around the value of higher ed. So you, um, I think it, it does give us a platform and an opportunity to, um, to really expose, if you will, to, to, the, to the rest of the country that we, we've been uh, taking some, some uh, somewhat of a, uh, of a beating, if you will. Rocks have been thrown at higher ed for the value associated with the college degree. So how do you, as our commissioner moving forward yep. uh, in this new economy, how will you help us um, and, and how can we help you? I mean, outside of what you've just said. Yeah, so um, the... The, the, I, th I think that the, the point you just raised is, is really critical that, uh, you know, what we saw in the wake of the Great Recession, and of course, what we're in now is far deeper than that. But what we saw in the wake of the Great Recession is that jobs follow skills. And right. in Texas, we know that more than 85% of the new jobs that were created in the wake of the Great Recession required at least some post-secondary education. So now we have hundreds of thousands of Texans who suddenly find themselves uh, out of a job and those same jobs are not gonna come back. So they're gonna have to reskill, they're gonna have to upskill to be able to get back on their feet. And um, you know, our higher education institutions, again, there's a return on this investment for the state. And um, you know, that's something I know, I know you embrace, I know the folks at the A&M system are, are very thoughtful about and embrace as well. Right, well, that's, that's a great segue. My, my next question for you, and I, I wanna be sensitive because I know you have a really important conference to get to um, in, in 15 minutes. Um, some students that, so, so the uh, ACE just released their national survey and it's showing that um, higher educational enrollments will be down 15% right. across the country. I'm sure you saw that report. Yeah. The economic equation was 40 plus billion dollar loss revenue, tuition fees, auxiliaries, et cetera. That's a significant blow. We're hearing from some students, even at Tarleton, that they're considering um, taking a gap year, um, which personally, I think this is the worst time to take a gap year. Mm -hmm. the, and often, you know, two years ago or even one year ago, three years ago, 
gap years made a lot of sense because they had study abroad opportunities. They had work, um, internship, externship opportunities. I don't think those are going to be as prevalent as they once were. Yeah. So do you have any comments no, I, on that? I think you're right that a lot of the a lot of the things that students would typically do in a gap year with travel or with work opportunities that it's just not going to be available to them um, right now. Um, so of course there's a there's a ton of uncertainty. Um, what I, I I worry about, and I know a lot of folks are worried about, is that students um, may when they, when they're talking about taking a gap year, a lot of times it might mean that they're really just sort of taking a break on, yeah. on their educational pathway, and then it's going to be harder to get them back on track. Um, so so my my advice to to students is. Um, that they actually might want to think about enrolling earlier. Uh, so maybe go ahead and get started in the summer um, and, and go ahead and start getting on track um, to, uh, to be able to complete uh, your credential. Um, so overall, so here's what we're, here's what we're seeing is, yeah, the, uh, there's the, the short-term costs, of course, to campuses with um, going online. Um, that's been, um, uh, significant, but but minor compared to, of course, the cost of campuses of providing prorated reimbursements for room and board. Uh, but the two bigger issues, as you alluded to, are that the multiple revenue streams have essentially collapsed uh, right. for campuses. From auxiliaries uh, alone uh, is going to put a number of campuses across the United States um, in a very uh, precarious financial situation. And then you combine that with uncertainty about enrollments. Um, so most campuses are bracing for drops of enrollments. Um, this is particularly an issue with our two-year institution. So as we've looked at sort of year-over-year -year comparisons for where we are right now compared to where we were a year ago, the um, uh, applications uh, for two-year institutions uh, for the summer are more than 10% less than we were seeing a year ago. Some of our institutions are seeing um, uh, drops in their summer, uh, their summer applications of 20%, 30% or more. Um, right. Some are also seeing um, their fall um, applications um, and their yield rates right now off by 15%. But of course, it's hard to predict exactly where we're going to be because we don't know really what the trajectory is going to be. That's, that, that forces a uh, you know, institutional leaders and state leaders to do a lot of contingency planning for how they're going to manage different kinds of uh, scenarios. Um, hopefully, we'll all be on campus um, with making the appropriate accommodations to pr uh, protect health and safety. Right. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the, the time to, to share your insights. And I can't think of a, a better person to be being um, our commissioner now, especially as we navigate a new normal, because often as you and I spoke, uh, texted, et cetera, but I've also listened to you speak several times now, you, you emphasize a return on investment. Um, and I, I, I wrote down jobs follow skills. Um, that's really yep. important. And I think for all of us, a, a new normal in higher education is assuring that we are producing degrees uh, where students can gainfully employ themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and how the combination of some of these degrees uh, doesn't mean that degrees have to go away. It may actually mean a merger of degrees. Yep. Uh, students can still follow passion. Yeah, I think that yeah. I think that's a great I think that's a great point. And one of the priorities for us at the coordinating board is we want to um, we want to try to improve the kind of information we can reflect back to campuses and re reflect back to faculty and departments as they're as they're working on the design of programs. Of course, there's some of the departments have uh, highly refined feedback mechanisms uh, where where they're they're able to stay a little more closely attuned to what happens with graduates. But I think we need to do a better job as a state of making that kind of actionable intelligence right. readily available to, to you and your colleagues at Tarleton and across the state. And, and that's something that now becomes even more important. You know, again, um, you know, what I've been talking with with our policymakers is that uh, uh, higher education is going to be key to the recovery. So, you know, what typically happens when um, we're in an economic downturn, unemployment goes up, and a lot of folks are going to want to reskill and upskill, ultimately going to want to enroll in higher ed. 
um, but also state budgets take a battery, uh, take a beating. States have tended to pull their support back for financial aid and direct support for institutions. And then tuition goes up, debt goes up, and that actually slows the recovery. Right. So um, we are already seeing that unfold in a number of states um, across the country where states have already announced major cuts um, across higher education institutions and for financial aid. Um, so I think, I think we can't emphasize enough um, the, the kind of uh, commitment to innovation, commitment to student success, and commitment to helping to drive the Texas recovery that I think we see across all of our colleges, our universities, from our community and technical colleges to our four-year universities to our university systems. Yeah, well, I'm going to put a shameless plug and, and let you go. As you, I think you know all too well, um, eight plus months ago uh, when I arrived, our leadership team supported by our faculty and staff, we made a, a, a very um, conscious effort to invest more of our resources into students. Uh, we, we made a, um, an effort and, and a plan, created a plan to reduce the cost uh, of a Tarleton State University education. And, and it wasn't because we saw COVID-19 coming, certainly. It's because we wanted to get back uh, among the top five most affordable institutions in the state. And that's one of our goals because Tarleton's always been an institution about opportunity and access. And that has to be uh, centered more so than ever now around the financial, removing financial barriers. So thank you so much for, for your support. Thank you for your leadership. Um, I, I, I can't imagine, uh, just running one institution here has been daunting. I can't imagine being in, in your role, role, having to manage everyone and, and help assist. So thank you for always being there for, for us and for all students across Texas. Well, thank you. I appreciate again, the opportunity to visit with, with you and your faculty and leadership team and uh, you know, be sure to let me know how can we be helpful to you. Sure will. Thanks so much, Commissioner. Best right. wishes. Thank you. Thank you. So the first uh, agenda item that I want to uh, quickly get into is, is a lot of you um, receive, hopefully you have read the letter uh, that was sent from my office uh, around reopen Tarleton. Um, that is a plan that is uh, firmly centered um, upon Governor Abbott's reopen Texas order. Um, we had a system call yesterday with Chancellor Sharp and his leadership team uh, to post guidance for us as we methodically think about uh, reopening Tarleton um, and, and certainly reopening the Texas A&M system and, and the rest of, of Texas. And we have our small part to play in that, and that's to ensure that we have a very methodical uh, approach to bringing all of you back to campus. And I want to let you know that, that I think we've been one of the institutions that have been commended for uh, taking a slower, more methodical approach. We've been very deliberate in some of our um, decisions, and that was simply to ensure that all of you were safe. And I know for 95% of you, you've been really, really happy with the way that we've handled um, a lot of these uh, decisions. And some of you like to move much faster and you want a decision uh, yesterday, and it's, it's just really hard um, and I hope that you will continue to be patient with all of us because ensuring that your safe, uh, your safety and well-being um, is, is at the forefront of our decision making. I've created a an eleven person uh, COVID nineteen reopening Tarleton task force. Uh, they will meet each Friday and start laying out a um, uh, a, a very methodical plan. And each uh, 15 days, we're going to we're going to evaluate the number of employees that we allow to return back to somewhat of a normal working environment. I do want to say for now, uh, as I emphasize in the letter, it's really important for you to continue uh, your virtual uh, environment. So if you're teaching, continue to teach. Um, if you're uh, a staff member that's processing financial aid or what, however your supervisor currently has it set up. I want you to continue to do so um, over the next uh, coming days and, and probably over the next two or three weeks. Um, again, 
our plan will be each week we'll release some information uh, to your department leaders, to the vice presidents, and they'll disseminate that information to each of you. I want to share um, a little around uh, our current enrollment statistics. You heard uh, Commissioner Keller uh, talk about the, the national trends, and I do think nationally uh, there are potentially some bleak outcomes uh, from this. I do think more students are uh, uncertain about um, entering college for the first time. I think we have certainly the case here at Tarleton where we're seeing um, uh, a drop in freshman and sophomore uh, re uh, registration. And so those students are concerned about what the environment looks like moving forward. These numbers at what um, are numbers posted yesterday. So these are not real time today. So uh, our headcount in, in terms of summer, we're actually up 10.38% in headcount and we're up 13.69% in uh, semester credit hour, which is a really, really good number. And that, again, all the numbers that I report are as of uh, May 30th versus 2019 and of course versus May 30th, uh, I'm sorry, April 30th of 20. Our fall numbers in totality are up. Right now we're up 6.18% uh, in headcount and we're up around two and a half percent in SCH. Um, now I'm cautiously optimistic about those numbers, but there are some trends that are uh, concerning and we're starting to see um, uh, st statistics like uh, more students have withdrawn their housing application over the last 30 days. Uh, part of where our increase, so you, you, one may ask where the 498 students uh, that were up. So essentially we were at 8,064 last year. Today we're at 8,562 for a difference of roughly 500, 498 students. Uh, our juniors and seniors to be, which are our current sophomores um, and juniors, and could be some, some juniors matriculating in or transitioning into their senior year. We're up 317 uh, among those numbers. Our master students are continuing master students or graduate students, if you will. We're up 186 versus this time last year. So those two have really carried us. Where we are suffering and where we're down are among our freshmen and sophomores. And so we're down um, uh, almost a percent, we're down 0 0.60%. Uh, this point last year, we had roughly um, or, uh, around 40 plus uh, students at this time. So retention with our current freshmen and sophomores are really, really important. I can't, I can't emphasize how important it is that we continue to focus on retaining the students that we have. And I think all of you, you know, uh, the economics behind recruiting a student uh, is more expensive than retaining the students that we currently have. And so those are just some quick numbers around our enrollment. We are, I do want you to know that myself and our leadership team, um, uh, Dr. Garza and, and, and our recruiters, our advisors, our deans, everyone really is taking an all hands on deck approach. We're making phone calls. I'm personally calling students. And I would encourage all of you, if you have some, some, some time and the opportunity to reach out to prospective students or current students to emphasize that, hey, we, we want you here. Uh, we want you to be part of our Texan family. That could be really, really important. And it helps mitigate the, the, you know, the, the budget um, at the end of the day because we're predicated upon uh, tuition and fees and auxiliary um, income at this institution. And so I just wanted to share nationally, I, I do have some, some concerns. We are, uh, so we're emphasizing now with our, our income and freshman class, uh, the letter will come out after this uh, call today uh, that's predicated upon guidance from our system and our governor that we are planning on reopening um, in the fall. And, and as much as we can uh, look like a normal Tarleton State University fall, uh, that's what our plans are. And again, once ag that's predicated upon uh, uh, information from our health providers, um, data from CDC and others, and, and we just hope and pray that 
a lot of this will be behind us and that we can resume to a sense of normal. So that that's our fall plan as of today. And that's going to be our um, announcement coming out here in the next 30 minutes. And then we'll have several videos and, and updates for prospective students and current students. So they will have at least a, a peace of mind knowing that our plan is to be face-to-face -face normal operations uh, come fall. Our spring and summer commencement plans uh, will, uh, again, those will take place August 7th through the 9th. Now we have decided uh, and been encouraged uh, to move those uh, commencement activities to uh, outdoors. And so we're blessed to have Memorial um, uh, Stadium uh, where we can host large venues and still practice some social distancing. Um, it's certainly outdoors. So that helps in terms of, of uh, CDC recommendations, et cetera. So um, on Monday, we're gonna be talking with our executive cabinet and we will have some proposals out of the, the provost's office on what uh, commencement should look like and, and, and how we stagger the colleges. I do know that we'll have an early morning and a late evening, so we will avoid the Texas uh, midday heat, which I know I learned very quickly can be searing and painful, and we're gonna avoid that at all costs. What I'd like to get into um, in our final agenda item is our current budget, our FY20 budget. Uh, Lori Beatty, our CFO, and I, uh, every day we connect uh, either virtually or face-to-face -to, -face to talk about where we are in terms of, of revenue versus expenses in our current year and to ensure that uh, we are financially solvent and whole moving forward. A lot of you know that we made the decision and it was the right decision to offer um, room and board uh, uh, refunds to those students that felt like their, um, it was in their best interest to move out of the dorms. And so we did the right thing and we prorated the refund for those students. And I do think that that's been a tremendously helpful and impactful in retaining those students. They feel much better about the institution they uh, invested their dollars with and that we will always do the right thing and do what's right by our students. All good deeds um, go um, punished, as we know, and no good deed goes unpunished. And, and with that, the cost was, uh, is estimated around 5.8 million. Uh, to date, uh, we have dispersed a little over, nearly four and a half million. I think our number yesterday was right around 4.4 million. So we're approaching that four and a half million. And we do know that more students are starting to process. They've been out of the dorms, uh, residence halls, I should say, for the last 20, 30 days, and they're just now getting around to um, asking for their refund, requesting the refund. So we do think that number will eclipse the 5 million. That came out of our st strategic reserves uh, funds. And so thankfully uh, with the CARES Act, that money will help us replenish uh, a large portion of that, that amount. So our strategic reserve fund is whole or nearly whole moving forward. Now that's critically important for all of us because we know here at Tarleton that we enter into our uh, SAC COC reaffirmation visit um, and evaluation. So ensuring that we're financially solvent is really, really important. Um, and, and being able to use that CARES Act money on the back end to prop up the refunds that we uh, awarded has is, is been so helpful. I would like for all of you, especially on the faculty side, to rem remind our students that we still have roughly 5 million, uh, nearly 5 million available for students in direct aid. And so I know we're, we're every day we're processing literally hundreds of requests to help students offset costs that are COVID-19 related. So if you could, please encourage those students to contact um, our business office. We have a COVID-19 hotline in which they can they can reach out. They can also get on our website to, to, um, to find. And, and we're automating those processes now where they can actually go online and it's, it's a real simple um, kind of two-step process and we can quickly pro, uh, process those refunds. Looking ahead um, in FY 2020, I'm sorry, 21 and 22 fiscal years, um, I do have some concerns. I, I've, I've heard numbers um, as high as 30% uh, potential cuts uh, out of the governor's office. I think more realistically, we're probably looking at somewhere between 10 and 20%. Um, 
And, and again, like Commissioner Keller indicated, uh, those are largely predicated upon uh, revenue and state revenue and, and how that's offset. And so hopefully as we continue to reopen Texas, uh, revenue streams will enhance uh, and increase, and that will lessen the blow uh, come um, session when our legislators have to meet and make some really tough decisions moving forward. I think coupled with a very um, low um, crude oil market and, and et cetera, that obviously has an adversarial effect on Texas as well. I have, uh, just so everyone knows, for the sake of transparency, I have issued um, a budget reduction proposal or a plan, I should say, for each of our vice presidents to work through so we can prepare to have that uh, submitted to our system um, at, a, at the appropriate time. And, and part of that uh, plan is looking at both personnel um, and operation. And then how can we look at services that we offer on this, at this institution to enhance some of our revenue streams moving forward. So part of the the revenue loss, we could certainly pick up in auxiliaries, we could pick up in state contracts, federal contracts. How can we make ourselves more accessible and more available uh, to meet some of these needs, but also help offset some of the some of our budgetary needs? Um, I will tell you that a reduction in force here certainly is always last resort. Um, and that is something that we uh, do not take lightly and that we're working really hard to avoid. Uh, but we just don't know with this budget moving forward. And it, and it may be impossible to avoid um, that scenario. Again, we're just planning. Uh, we're methodically thinking through all of our options. And I want you to know that your vice presidents and the academic deans have been unbelievably responsive uh, and helpful. And it's really going to take all of us joining together in, in, in true Texan fashion and in, in, in true, true Tarleton family fashion uh, to navigate these uncharted waters over the next uh, two, three, four months. We, we do need everyone to be um, as involved as they can be in the recruitment, uh, the retention and reentry efforts. We're going to really uh, work really hard to um, aggressively seek students that had a stop out or they have hours even from another institution and we're, we're uh, that regional opportunity for those students. So we're aggressive in, in trying to, to find every uh, student that we possibly can to help backfill some of the potential loss that we'll, we will have. As we uh, conclude a, another semester, uh, my first semester, I, or I'm sorry, my first year, my second semester, I want to thank um, everyone from the bottom of my heart for your, your, your diligence, your patience, your hard work. Um, you have, uh, you have rose above and beyond the call of duty. And, and to see our family pull together has been truly remarkable. We're going to need that more than ever over the next um, several months. So again, best of luck to our faculty and staff who are now processing final exams. Um, any student that may be watching as well, I don't think we have a lot of students today. Uh, this was primarily for faculty and staff, but uh, continue to encourage your students. Faculty, you are the, the mentors to these students right now. You literally have more face-to-face -face than anyone. Uh, and, and you are that positive light and that beacon of hope for those students. And I want to encourage you uh, to, to be encouraging and, and to really help these students navigate um, uh, as, as none of you asked for the, uh, this, this situation, uh, neither did, did, they, did they. So Thank you so much. I look forward to when we have the opportunity to get back face to face. We will continue to process uh, methodically and plan uh, carefully, and we will start rolling out our reopen Tarleton plans very soon. So as always, forever bleed purple and roll Texans.